In each episode of the Wisdom Podcast, I share both spiritual and practical wisdom, together with the insights, offerings, and truth that have helped others live their greatness, conquer their fears, heal from the experiences of their past, be resilient, live empowered and free, and of course, of their authentic happiness. You may hear your own story and some of the stories of my clients who have healed themselves, become in control of their life, and reclaimed their authentic power. Seeking a deeper understanding and meaning of life awakens us to discover our purpose and to witness infinite beauty and joy that is so abundant. Each episode is meant to offer something beautifully relevant and timely for you. Let the sacred path that you are on be one that you choose deliberately, based on the inspired wisdom of your inner truth, and as you live a beautiful and love-filled life. Welcome to this episode and the fourth in a five-part series on the yamas. The literal translation of the word yama in Sanskrit is restraint. Religious texts of Hinduism and Jainism outline five yamas. These moral vows or moral disciplines are considered universal teachings. They are important, auspicious practices that guide us towards how we may live in the world. Yet truly, they are intended to offer the spiritual grace of how to act towards ourself. There are five yamas in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. In today's episode, we dive into Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya reminds us to approach each day and each action with a sense of sacredness rather than indulgence so that we may experience and live life in wonder and privilege rather than the misgivings of greed and excess. Brahmacharya, the moderation of the senses, is one of the key practices for managing sensory cravings. As the fourth yama, Brahmacharya helps us cultivate self-awareness and transform habits that are out of sync with our spiritual aspirations. If you haven't yet, I would recommend you also have a listen to the first three yamas in this series. And then join me next week for the final yama, Aparigraha. Brahmacharya as a Sanskrit word translates as walking in God consciousness and one who is established in the way of God or the creative force. Practically speaking, brahmacharya as a moral discipline is how we turn the mind inward. It is how we balance the senses, leading us to freedom from dependencies and cravings. When the mind is freed from domination by the senses, sensory pleasures are replaced by authentic happiness. Brahmacharya is also described as the practice of non-excess, moderation, and right use of energy. It is the practice of experiencing the pleasure, wonder, and mystery of life without overindulgence. When you choose to look at yourself and your energy as sacred, the practice of moderation becomes easeful and an act of honoring the divine within yourself and others. What is moderation? The first step in Brahmacharya's simple and elegant strategy for managing desires is to cultivate awareness of your sensory cravings and the manner in which you express them. In other words, when the senses are awake and active, observe them. Allow them moderate activity and be prepared to set limits. Rather than constraining the senses, the process of witnessing gives the mind a chance to act in a measured way. 
It takes diligence to remember this in the midst of an ice cream feast or binging on a series in Netflix. Yet the principle is surprisingly effective. Enjoy in moderation. When your mind tells you that you are acting immoderately, take note. Let this awakening of your senses hold an opportunity for you to change your behavior. You will undoubtedly find the balance if you look within. The true measure of moderation with any of the senses is its effect on your thoughts, feelings, and actions. In his online article featured in Yoga International, Rolf Sovik writes, When pleasure can be experienced without guilt or agitation, and if it does not preoccupy your mind, then it is not disturbing your equilibrium. But if the mind is overly distracted by an enjoyable experience, then the cause of that disturbance or need for gratification can be identified through careful self-observation and then through the practice of brahmacharya. Find ways to practice brahmacharya that align with your needs. Begin by recording your honest answers to these questions to guide this yama practice. First, where do you spend your energy? Where do you devote most of your free time, and what do you give your attention to that you are choosing consciously and deliberately? Second, when does your energy get drained? What may you do to prevent this? Third, what areas of your life have excess? Where do you overindulge, whether in material goods, food, social media, work, socializing, sex, refined sugar, alcohol, drugs? Fourth, what is the reason that you move past the feeling of having enough into excess? Fifth, how can you make the best use of your vital energy? Sixth, where in your life are you skilled at practicing moderation? And finally, what are the ways that you can slow your thoughts and calm your mind? These questions all make excellent journal prompts for being more aware of how you can practice and embody brahmacharya in your life. And here are some practical ways to embrace the moral discipline of brahmacharya in daily life. First, eat slowly. Use your breath to savor everything you take in. Second, use deep breaths to scan the body and connect with subtle energy shifts as you moderately take in beverages and water. Third, notice when you have the impulse to indulge in more. Gently remind yourself that less is more. Fourth, Be sure to eat enough and not restrict foods. Use moderation as a tool to find your healthy balance. Your healthy balance will have different needs on different days and depending on your energy output and exercise. Fifth, notice what emotions and thoughts rise when you have the impulse to indulge. Notice your emotions and thoughts when practicing moderation. Objectively observe and make some notes to record what you learn. This will help guide you into a natural flow of the right use of energy and non-excess. Sixth, very simply listen to your body. 
Seventh, choose a time when you can be in silence each day at least once and for five to ten minutes. Notice what this practice does for you. And finally, schedule times to check social media and emails and place a time limit on how long you spend using these tools. Be aware of the strong habits and reflexes you have to reach for your phone first thing upon waking and many times excessively throughout the day. What different habits can you practice in regards to how you access social media and emails that are in balance and that allow your greater freedom to experience more of the present moment as it unfolds? Be sure to check out the resources that I'm going to leave in the description for you and also let me know how your practice of brahmacharya develops in your life, how it brings to light the beautiful and sustaining way of balance, the beautiful way that you can honor all as sacred and to honor yourself as sacred as you hold gratitude and wonder in your heart. And be sure to join me next week for the fifth Yama, Aparigarha. Thank you so much. Sending you great love, this is Dorothy. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of the Wisdom Podcast. To hear more, please check out the other episodes right here. And I'd love for you to subscribe and share your feedback on this or any episode with me. And then join me at DorothyRatusny.com, where you'll find the wisdom blog, the inspiration for this podcast, the latest online courses that I teach, my YouTube videos, and the Wisdom Archives, which are an extensive library of guided meditations, mindfulness musings, spiritual teachings, and best therapeutic practices for your whole being, and to nourish and heal your life, plus many other special offerings of love. Please also visit me on social media and say hello. Allow yourself to go within to access your inner wisdom, and to live this. Awaken your authentic power, live your truth, and be love. Thank you. This is Dorothy.